Vanakkam, Satsri Akal. Welcome to the launch of the Sikhs in Singapore Virtual Gallery and Digital Publication, organized by the Indian Heritage Center. We are delighted that you have joined us for this last event, marking the end of the Sikhs in Singapore, a story untold exhibition. Co-created with the Sikh community, the exhibition brought to light the history and culture of Singapore Sikhs. This landmark exhibition has now been archived through a virtual gallery encapsulating the exhibition experience and the collective and unique material and intangible heritage of Singapore's Sikh community. This archive is also complemented by a digital publication featuring essays by academics, historians, curators, and community experts elaborating on the concept of Sikh heritage in Singapore. To begin this evening's launch program, we would like to invite Mr. Dilbag Singh, President of the Central Sikh Gurdwara Board and member of the IHC Advisory Board to deliver an introductory message. Mr. Dilbag, please. Good evening and Satsri Akalji. Thank you for joining us this evening for the launch of the Six in Singapore, a story untold, <clears throat> virtual gallery and digital publication. This marks the culmination of a landmark exhibition held at the Indian Heritage that brought together our Sikh community to collectively revisit our rich heritage. It is indeed a wonderful coincidence that this launch event is taking place today, the 14th of March, the first day in the Sikh New Year, the first day of the month of Chet in the Nank Shahi calendar. And I wish everybody a happy New Year. Those of you watching this event online will be viewing it on a momentous day, the 141st anniversary of the arrival of the first recruits of the Sikh police contingent in Singapore. And the one first year anniversary of the launch of the exhibition. I had the rare opportunity to be a part of the making of the exhibition from its outset, together with a team of community representatives who formed a working committee from May 2020 to January 2021 to the Indian Heritage Center. It was perhaps for the first time that all of the Sikh institutions came together to support a heritage initiative showing our tradition and culture. It is a matter of pride that I represent the group today when I say <clears throat> that the exhibition has brought out a nuanced understanding of Singapore's Sikh heritage. It encouraged us Sikhs to share a part of our lives with larger Singapore community to promote greater interfaith and intercultural understanding. It would be remiss of me to not thank the working group members who gave their time and advice without restraint. And I ask that you join me in showing them our appreciation, please. Heritage is a sh shifting concept, a word that can hold many interpretations for different people, tangible and intangible. We all access our heritage differently, and the exhibition showed us a glimpse of this diversity. From food to fashion, from faith to em empire, from emigration to settlement, from war to independence, 
By doing so, it has brought to the fore the tremendous potential heritage has for cross-generational interaction, education, and, general, and gender balance. I'm delighted that this archive of Sikh heritage in Singapore has taken a virtual form that will be available for viewing beyond the physical shelf life of the exhibition. Through this virtual gallery, our family, friends, and supporters in Singapore and around the world can visit the exhibition and view the over 450 artifacts presented in the exhibition, many of which were shown in Singapore for the first time. Coming from the education sector myself, I know the power knowledge holds in kindling cultural appreciation and understanding. I am glad that we will be adding to the research available on the community with a digital publication which features 26 essays by 31 authors edited by none other than Professor Tan Tai Yong, a long-standing supporter of the Sikh community. Thank you for lending us your experience and expertise once again. Thank you, Prof Tan. I would also like to thank the heads of the Sikh Gurdwaras in Singapore, the Istri Satsang, and the Sikh Missionary Society for coming together to support these twin initiatives to document and preserve our heritage for posterity. I would also like to thank two individual donors who have asked to stay anonymous for the generous contribution to support this effort. Our coming together signals our deep interest in our heritage and hope that it will inspire generations to own <clears throat> their Sikh heritage with pride. With that, I thank the Indian Heritage Center for bringing us all together and for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf <clears throat> of the Sikh institutions in <coughs> Singapore. Thank you. Uh, leaders of the Sikh community, uh, Mr. Rajaram, um, new chairman of the uh, Indian Heritage Center Advisory Board. You've just been appointed, right? Just started. Well, congratulations and uh, thank you very much for being here this evening with us. Um, well, I was wondering what I should be speaking about um, re re with regards to the book. I guess the best thing one could do is to read the book itself and to see for yourself what the contents are. But let me just make some brief introductory remarks. And um, then when the book is available on digital format, you'll be able to uh, look into the rich content that um, the essays have brought together in this very, very interesting volume. I, I should begin by, by thanking um, the organizers, IHC, uh, leaders of the community, for giving me the opportunity to be involved in this project which is a wonderful collection of the catalog, as well as uh, 26 essays, uh, all addressing the themes uh, of the exhibition. Now, I know I'm biased since I'm the editor. This is a very handsome volume, if I may say so myself, and a, a very wonderful compliment to a very well-received and important exhibition, which just ended its run not too long ago. Uh, these essays by 31 authors 
of a thoughtful and insightful expansion into, on the themes broached in, as well as the documents and artifacts featured in the exhibition. So in that way, they complement uh, what's been shown, discussed, elaborated in the exhibition, and this has taken the form of now essays contributed by members of the community, as well as scholars on Sikhism. So the essays address a range of themes, and these themes uh, you are familiar with, uh, roots, faith and belief, the Sikh empire in Punjab, migration and settlement, the Sikh women, war and uprising, becoming Singaporean, Sikhs in contemporary Singapore. So they cover the entire range of themes that were featured in the exhibition. So the essays, 26 of them, address different aspects in depth and with very interesting illustrations, personal stories, anecdotes, as well as rich historical research on many of these themes. They cover the subjects um, of history, of heritage, of arts, of culinary traditions, of community identity, of commerce, etc. So a whole range of issues. And these essays, by a selection of academics, curators, historians, and community experts, reflect personal encounters. So there are many personal reflections uh, with the heritage of the community uh, that have been shaped in so many ways by personal histories of origins, by the roots in the community, by historical experiences and shifting contexts, by the host culture that the community found itself in over different periods of time, um, and by personal lived experiences. So you have a combination of not just a detached scholarly analysis, but a very personal engagement with the subject matter itself. And has been mentioned by Mr. Mr. Dilbak Singh and by Nalina, this is truly a community effort. This is truly a community effort, and I want to express my gratitude to Nalina from the Indian Heritage Center for her wonderful effort in curating and staging the exhibition from which we drew, the authors drew inspiration and materials for the respective essays. I thank her and her colleague, uh, Nisa Abdurazak, for also inviting me to be part of this important initiative and for their tremendous effort doing the heavy lifting for this volume. Uh, I, I shouldn't claim too much credit for this because the essays were written by very qualified, distinguished experts. There was little that I needed to do except to enjoy the, the, the insights, the analysis, the way it was written, the, the narratives, it was all very interesting. And it was really, for me, a privilege to be part of this group. Um, and I want to thank also all the contributing authors for their wonderful essays and for their patience in working with the editorial team, all of us, as we um, ventured back and forth on citations, on uh, editing uh, formats, etc., etc., and in the selection of um, images, photographs, maps, um, and personal uh, artifacts, all of which are featured um, in the book. And so the chapters uh, are actually supplemented by a wonderful collection of images, which I'm sure when you see the book, you'll enjoy. And finally, um, I think uh, I'm repeating what's been said earlier, the support that has been given by the community in um, sponsoring the digital, uh, the virtual gallery as well as the digital publication. Um, representatives of these organizations have been here and what I once again want to thank all of you for uh, supporting this very important effort of which I've been privileged to be a part. I don't wish to speak uh, further, but maybe what we'll do is uh, subsequent to this, there'll be a panel discussion of which I'll be a part. And I think here is where we listen to the contributors the people who have been very much part of both the exhibition and the book, and I'm sure they'll be um, sharing with us their personal experiences as well as reflections on the effort that has gone into this uh, wonderful initiative. Thank you all very much. Um, we are really grateful for the advi advice that you gave us throughout the making of the publication. Sikhs in Singapore and around the world are arguably one of the most visible communities yet so little is known about their history, culture, and heritage. Sikhs in Singapore, a story untold, has helped us reconstruct the narrative of Singapore's Sikhs through the lens of heritage. The panel discussion, titled 
defamiliarizing Singapore Sikhs, relooking at the community through the lens of heritage, seeks to draw out this nuanced viewing of Sikh heritage and define why heritage continues to be relevant to the community. Leading the panel discussion will be Prof. Tan Tayong. Prof. Tan is the second president and professor of humanities at Yale NUS College. Prof. Tan specializes in South and Southeast Asian history, and he has published extensively on the Sikh diaspora, social and political history of colonial Punjab, decolonialization, and the partition of South Asia, as well as Singapore history. Prof. Tan until recently served in the IHC advisory board and continues to serve as the chairman of the NHB's National Collection Advisory Panel. May I invite the next panelist on stage, please? Simranjit Singh is the CEO of Gardant Health Asia, Middle East and Africa, a cancer diagnostics company. He has over 15 years of senior management experience in Asia Pacific, working with biopharma, diagnostics, and medical device companies for their R&D, business expansion, and growth strategies for the region. Simranjit is also a committee member with the Central Sikh Gurdwara Board. The next panelist we'd like to invite is Malminder. Malminderjit is the chairman of the Sikh Advisory Board. With a unique blend of editorial, public policy, government relations, communications, management, and research experience, Malminder has a diverse set of skills across multiple industries. He comes with analytical, communications, research, and public policy skills acquired as a business journalist, trade negotiator, and in academia. The last, but of course, the most important member of our panel, um, bringing to us some gender balance here, is Dupinder Kaur. Dupinder is a Young Sikh Association Exco member. She is currently pursuing a Juris Doctor in Law at the Singapore Management University. Dupinder believes that through legal knowledge, she would be better able to give back to society by carrying out pro bono work and better help residents at legal clinics. So we're honored to have with us a very distinguished panel to talk about the exhibition, the publications, and to share with us their thoughts on um, issues and the sort of narratives that have been raised in terms of heritage, history, identity, culture of the Sikh community. We were supposed to have a uh, larger panel this evening, uh, but COVID uh, <laughs> claimed two of our victim, uh, two of our panelists this, this evening, so they, they could not join us. But still, we have a very high-powered uh, panel, so we'll be uh, happy to uh, hear their views. I've prepared some questions ahead of the uh, discussion, so I'm going to part. I'm going to start by asking the panel um, some general questions first, and then I may have specific questions for each of the panelists. And of course. Um, Time permitting, I'll try to receive your questions uh, that is sent to Pigeon Hole. Um, and um, I hope that uh, we'll have a very fruitful discussion this evening. So let me begin uh, by asking the panel, um, and I, I, I hope all three will be able to answer this. Um, how has the exhibition helped in creating greater awareness of the Sikh community in Singapore? I repeat my question, how has the exhibition helped in creating greater awareness of the Sikh community in Singapore. Um, any takers first? So I, I was one of the last minute additions to this panel. <laughs> I was supposed to be moderating the panel instead. So answering questions was not part of the job scope, I guess, but nonetheless. Um, firstly, I, I think the, the entire exhibition itself has been a, a really momentous journey and I, I would like to personally thank Nalina and her team and the Indian Heritage Center for, for putting su together such a memorable exhibition, right? I mean, I think it captured uh, the intricacies of the, 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 the entire Sikh community and, and more importantly, told stories that many of us never knew. And, and I think this journey itself, you know, it was, it, it's interesting when I reflect back on the journey, I remember a conversation in uh, late of December of 2018 um, myself, Mel, and a few others at, um, at, uh, at ACM together with Nalina and a few others, that there's, there, there, there wasn't a, um, an, there has not been an exhibition that covered 
um, uh, the full expanse of the, the Sikh community in Singapore. And more importantly, there was just an exhibition that was being done in the UK on the Sikh empire, and we wanted to look at how we bring that over. But I think what Nalina and her team have achieved now is probably much bigger and broader than what we were even thinking. We were only looking at one aspect of, of um, the, 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 the Sikh community or the Sikh history. But here what we did, or what the team did collectively, everyone here in the working group, was to create an entire journey and experience that all of us can, be, can, can, can relate to. Every, every aspect from the empire to uh, faith, to community living, to folk songs, to our ancestry, to migration, to the different uh, life events from birth to marriage to death, to, to coins, to artifacts, all of that encapsulated in one experience, one, one exhibition. And more importantly, now with the digital format for perpetuity, I mean, I think it's brilliant. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous effort from the community. So for me, I think it's been an immersive experience and really, really thankful for the Indian Heritage Centre team to put this together. So firstly, I would like to thank the team of IHC for providing me with this opportunity and also a seat at the table with established men. Um, so, I mean, other than that, I think how the exhibition has um, helped to create greater awareness. If I look at the community level, then I think um, it provides with more information about Sikhs to non-Sikhs. And also, it do away with stereotypes or statements such as that, oh, are you a Sikh, the, the man that wears turban? Like, that's the only thing that most people would know or the most common statement you, ha you hear in schools, universities. So I think um, through this exhibition, it has helped to portray Sikh not only in terms of their makeup, but also like the contributions that they have done towards the uh, Singapore community. And on a more personal level, I think the exhibition has helped me because in each and every household, we have our own narrative of how our grandfathers came to Singapore, how they started their establishment, their businesses. But we never actually got the chance to cross-refer our narrative with all the other families. So when I had the opportunity to go to the exhibition, I actually um, learned a lot about the other families that went through similar struggles. Uh, firstly, um, heartiest congratulations to everyone for Chait Sangran and Happy New Year to everyone, all of you. Um, so I, I, I wasn't as involved, although I was part of the um, working group, I wasn't as involved as many of you here were uh, in putting the exhibition together. Um, so really, I was more a participant than an and, um, and, and observer than anything else. So I would say that um, I, like many of the community members, attended the, and visited the exhibition uh, twice. One, of course, at the launch, and then thereafter with my family. Uh, and then at the third time again, when I brought a group of young Singaporeans uh, actually, that was the last weekend uh, the exhibition was held. Thanks to Nalina and team who helped um, orchestrate that together. So we brought together a team of uh, a group of young 20 Singaporeans from different walks of life, uh, all leaders in their own space. Um, this is part of the, the group uh, called the Birthday Collective that, that uh, we were involved in. And what struck me was the three different experiences I had um, you know, on, on three of those visits. Uh, the first time at the launch, I think, you know, there was a lot of pomp and, and, and grandeur. And it was proud, uh, I was proud to be part of that because uh, I think, you know, we could never have imagined that uh, you would see the Sikh community being displayed, uh, you know, to the rest of Singapore at that level. So I think that was a great moment of pride for many of us, uh, including myself. The second time was when I went with my family and I thought that was interesting because I brought my three young kids, uh, and some of you know my kids are really young, uh, to, to the exhibition. And I got to show them things that I saw as a kid. Very clear example, Desi Manja, right? So the Punjabi bed, right? The traditional Punjabi bed. You now in the generation of King Coil mattresses, there's no more Desi Manjas anymore. So I got to see it as a young kid because my grandparents had one. And I was so happy to have the opportunity to show my kids some of these things, you know, uh, the Desi Manja, the, the, the Sikh policeman uniform, some of these artifacts, and I thought it was fab fabulous. You know, they went away thinking, I mean, I don't know, not sure how much they're going to remember because they're really young, but at least they went away with a reference point, and I thought that was so useful, and I'm so indebted to Indian Heritage Centre for that. The third time when I brought, um, uh, I went with uh, a group of young Singaporeans, and they were all non-Punjabi, uh, non-Sikh. Um, in fact, they were all non-Indians as well. And um, it was amazing because I got to learn so much about my community from them, 
because of the questions they asked, because of the perspectives they shared. And the one thing that I, I was left with was that they told me that this exhibition was so enlightening, it must not die. It must remain. And I knew then at that point in time that this was the last week of the physical exhibition. So I'm so glad that uh, Nalina and all the institutions got together to make sure that this exhibition remains a reality virtually. Thank you. Obviously, this exhibition uh, has uh, played its part in, uh, in explaining the Sikh community to the community itself as well as to members from outside the community. But I want to touch on a point that Dupinda raised earlier, and that is to say that, you know, um, there's a general sort of a certain, um, I won't call it stereotype, but there's a certain set understanding of what the Sikh community is, partially because of the visibility of the community and there are certain assumptions that this is what the community is, it, it represents, and that's how they, uh, they organize themselves and so on. But we know that it's much more complex than that, right? We know that you know, heritage is much more complex. It's not single or even double dimension. It's more, much more than that. So in what ways do you think the exhibition, and that's the purpose of the exhibition, right? The story untold. The story, the story untold. How has it, in a way, presented a more nuanced, a more complete picture of the Sikh community? I think the, there was this part of the exhibition, Prof, that uh, showcased 50 young Sikhs, uh, which was co-curated with YSA. Um, I thought that was an amazing part of the exhibition. Uh, one, because it showed um, people from very different walks of life. Now, there was, a, there was a misperception or misconception that there was the top 50 young Sikhs in Singapore. There was no such category or no such ranking. It was just 50 Sikhs who came from interesting walks of life. There were sportsmen, there were professionals, there were musicians, artists, filmmakers, so on and so forth. And I thought that was amazing because it really showed the breadth and depth of the Sikh community and the future of the Sikh community. And it showed to anyone who wanted to see a glimpse of what the Sikh community might look like going forward that the future still remains bright, that we have quite a vast uh, you know, array of people there. Um, I think secondly was the fact that um, uh, you know, the... the the exhibition was one aspect, but also the, the program was curated around the exhibition. The content, the webinars, the seminars, the panel discussions that went on for many, many months. I thought that was very good information gathering and sharing as well. Yeah, I, I concur with Mel. I think the, 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 the enriched content of the, of the exhibition, which spread more than just the exhibition itself. I mean, I think there was a lot of content that was shared by the Isri Sasanga, the uh, uh, SK Ladies Wing, a lot of that content was really beautiful. I mean, the folk songs, the, the ability to, to, to make some of the dishes, obviously I've not tried any of them, but, but, but I will try the end product. <laughs> but, but I mean, all of that really enriching, right? You know, some of this is, I, I would say, intangible heritage that needs to be captured. Because how, how many of us are going to have the, the ability to sing some of those folk songs? I, I, I remember... Sangeet with, with, the, with the small tolki and the spoon and, and all of that. And, and all of that is going off already. I mean, we're we seeing that moving away. And some of keeping that traditions alive, I thought was very interesting. I thought that was one way to connect. I also felt that the three uh, uh, short films that were put together were really well done because, you know, it, it captured the key points and poignant moments in... In, in, in um, Sikh history, uh, I mean, in your living, right? Your, uh, you had the elderly and they reflecting back on how they came. You had the life moments of marriage and you have the perspective of the young. Because many of the time we forget of how we were when we were young. We, are, we were curious, we wanted to understand. We want, and all of these things that were happening around us still didn't have much meaning yet because you're still finding yourself. And looking from the lens of that child, I thought it was also very beautiful because, you know, we, you, you, we got all perspectives as well. So I thought those, those were things that I, I, I felt really connected with me. Yeah, I think I agree with him that um, the exhibition was very nuanced in the way that it preserved both the tangible and the intangible heritage. And um, I think what was striking was that many a times, especially in the Sikh community, like as what Prof mentioned, it's, um, it's very male-centric, also partly because of, you know, the turban is a very prominent, um, I don't know how to put it, but a prominent makeup of a Sikh. So, but then 
what this uh, exhibition did was also highlighted the role of women. So they had a whole section dedicated to the role of Sikh women. And while they were like usually in the backgrounds at first, I think this exhibition provided them with the platform to come up and show how they have contributed to the community. And mainly by being just keepers of tradition, it may not be in terms of profession or like something very tangible, but by just keeping the tradition, they have played a huge role in the community. Dupinda, can I push you on this? Because I think you've touched on a very important point. The whole idea that, you know, the narrative of the community is normally, I'm not saying it always is, normally male-centric. And you mentioned the idea that, you know, the, the, the women of the community have featured in the, um, in the exhibition. I want you to reflect on your personal experience, you know, and how three generations of your family, the women, how have they... Have they, how have they fulfilled themselves in the sort of uh, in the exhibition, their roles in the exhibition? Yeah, so, um, so personally in my family, um, it starts off with my grandmother. And uh, so if you look back in the 20th century or in the olden days, usually the women were confined within their households. So they used to like do more of like, you know, handicrafts and um, their social life used to be in terms of gurdwaras. And then soon after, they um, joined the Isri uh, Satsang. So my grandmother is a part of the Isri Satsang. And then that was like the first generation. So she contributed to the exhibition by the singing of the Lok Geet. And then the second generation is my mom's generation. And at that time, there were like a bit of differences whereby women had the opportunity to leave their households. They had the opportunity to go overseas to pursue education. So my mom is one of them that pursued education overseas. She comes back and she's able to contribute to the household on the same part, on the same level as any other man contributes to the household. And how she contributed to the exhibition was by uh, being part of the SKA Ladies Wing. So they um, organized all the ladies, the low key section. And then the third generation, which is me, I was featured as one of the uh, portraits for the 50 Sikhs. And I think how I play a role in the community is firstly by being a member of the Young Sikh Association. And secondly, I think uh, through the exhibition, I had the opportunity to share how I have been actively involved in the community. And I have to admit that initially, I was very involved in the community, but not in the Sikh community. I used to do a lot of volunteer work outside. But then throughout my journey, I realized that why am I not contributing to my own community before I go and contribute to the larger community? So I think through this exhibition, um, it not only shows the three generations of women, but it also shows the evolving role that women have played. Yeah. I'm going to pause here for me for a while. I'm going to ask Nalina whether they have any questions that we've received from the, from the floor. Can just read out, um, you know, one of the questions. Uh, there are a few that have received votes as well, so you know we'll go with what everybody thinks is important. Um, and I think one of the questions is quite interesting. Um, how did this exhibition help with intercommunity understanding mm. itself? Is this an area where more needs to be done? It's a very good question. Maybe this is a uh, question for Simran and then ask Mel and of course to Pinder as well. So maybe Simran, we start with you first. Sure. No, I think, I think this is an important uh, gateway for, for non-Sikhs to also understand more about the Sikh community. And I think it's been mentioned here, there have been, I mean, fairly visible um, uh, uh, sort of uh, hallmarks of the Sikh, the, the turban, the beard. But this went beyond this, those visible markers. It looked at the heritage, it looked at the community, it looks at the different contributions. We had Sikh businessmen who were the early businessmen. We had the, the, the entire looking at um, the, uh, Justice Chur Singh, who was the first uh, Chief Justice. You had uh, prominent uh, politicians, early pol politicians. You had um, uh, different individuals and their family stories of how they came, how they established their roots. Um, inventors who, who, who invented different different uh, uh, apparatus and they were also displayed. So, so I, I thought it, it sort of gave a, a window in terms of the contributions and not only it also gave the, how they came to Singapore, it also gave an insight and a window into the Sikh empire. So the past of the Sikhs, right, with, uh, with a lot of the artifacts of uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, 
the map of Punjab, where did the, the Sikhs actually ever come from? That you know, the common misconception that we are Bengalis um, were, were, you know, was, was, was sort of addressed. That you know, the Sikhs came from Punjab, and this is this was a kingdom at that point in time, and a very prosperous kingdom that, at, at that. And then you had artifacts and badges and and commemorative medallions and uh, um, and all of those insignia, which was also another part of, of uh, the, the Sikhs' contribution to Singapore. Many of them, and I think two-thirds of, of the, the Indian forces who were here were Sikhs during the Japanese occupation. And, and so many of their contributions was also commemorated and, and established as part and parcel of the exhibition. So I thought that gave a good window and insights to non-Sikhs about the community. Yeah, Prof, thanks. Um, no, I think very much so. It definitely helped. Um, for those of us uh, involved um, in Sikh institutions, um, especially like the CSGP or SAB, um, many of us are here today, uh, you will know that this correcting the misperception of what a Sikh is or improving the understanding of who a Sikh is, is almost a weekly affair. Um, you know, every week, whether it's dealing with a school, it's dealing with an employer or, you know, some media article that misquotes or mis completely misrepresents who or what a Sikh is. So efforts such like this, I think, go a long way. Uh, Prof, you and I were involved in one such effort six, seven years ago, where we put together the SG50 book, um, and that, that showcased 50 Sikhs. I think we must not miss as Simon said, you know, there were several prominent uh, individuals and contributions highlighted in this um, exhibition. Um, as a minority within a minority, we must not miss any effort or any attempt uh, or any opportunity um, to highlight and showcase ourselves, uh, the community, and also those who have done well and, uh, in the community and, and the diversity of the community. So yeah, definitely an important part. part. Uh, yeah, I think um, I agree that you know it, the exhibition really shows the inter-community effort. And also because firstly, this exhibition was a co-creation with all the uh, heads of the Sikh institutions. And as a youth and an outsider, because I wasn't part of the working team, um, I feel that, you know, when I went for the exhibition, I actually got to learn a lot more about all the various Sikhs and what they have been doing, rather than just being in my own bubble and circle or seeing another Punjabi in university. That's it. So I was more exposed to the various efforts that came together to put up this exhibition. And at the same time, I think we also have to acknowledge that this was done during the pandemic or the circuit breaker. So I think other than you know, the end result, the process also matters because it really shows how that you know, um, various institutions, various Sikh individuals, if they do come together, they can produce great things. How has the exhibition created a corridor among Sikhs in Singapore and around the world? Okay, so this is a good question. There is a, there is a larger Sikh diaspora um, beyond Singapore, in the region and around the world. So how, how has this created a window, a corridor, a bridge um, for the larger diaspora to understand how each community in different settings have developed, have evolved, have strived? So this is a larger question. Any, any takers? Yeah, Simran. Maybe I can start on this. Um, so I had the opportunity to um, moderate several of the webinars um, that was done as part of the of, of this exhibition, um, and one of the webinars that that were you know I, I really took I, I enjoyed all of them, but one of them that really uh, stuck out for me was um, was a webinar on uh, Sambawang Naval Base, and Uncle G is here as well, and, and um, uh, uh, Uncle uh, Colonel Charanjit Ch Ch uh, and his friends moderate uh, sort of shared a lot of the life experiences in that webinar we had people from australia from uk from malaysia everywhere join in for that for that webinar because all of them were connected to to the sambawang naval base and the sikhs that were living living in that naval base so it was it was an interesting experience we had so many questions i, I we, we ran out of time in fact we overran on time because the the the, the amount of interest and and they were talking about they are, they are experienced, and now they are part of the wider diaspora because their grandfathers were, 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 were based in Singapore but then left and, and uh, went to settle in the UK when, when uh, the, they were allowed citizenship. So some of them were fairly, fairly old, some of them fairly recent. So it was, it was one way that, that, that sort of connected the different uh, diasporic communities as well. 
The other one that I thought was interesting was also the loans. Many of the loans for some of the artifacts came from outside. So you had the uh, Kapani collection, you had the Kanuja collection, you had the tool collection, uh, Kapani and, and Kanuja in the US, the tool collection from the UK. And many of them had never displayed their items in Singapore or this part of the world, in fact, not even Singapore, never in Southeast Asia. And so they, they, for them, this was the first time that they were actually lending out their, their items and artifacts to this part of the world. And it, it then connected them, that there were collectors, there was interest, and this, this is an important um, area for them to also share about the Sikh heritage. So I thought those, those were two ways that the diasporic communities got connected with this exhibition. How will the community take forward the journey that has been set in motion by the exhibition? Okay, another good question. Has it been a wonderful effort, a wonderful start? And um, it should not just sort of peter off and people will forget after a few years. How do you maintain that momentum? How do you take it off from here? What more efforts can be made? What new initiatives can stem from all this? I, I think the exhibition, really, and NH, uh, IHC's efforts are not the beginning nor the end. I think they are along the journey. The journey has been coming for a while. Uh, you know, this journey of, of showcasing um, the Sikh community and trying to um, aggregate our heritage. This has been an ongoing effort by many organizations and individuals in the community, even before my time. Um, you know, and some of you here uh, have been involved, with from, from, uh, involved in that from the day one. Um, but in terms of this exhibition itself, I think it will definitely catalyze other initiatives and efforts just like other uh, um, um, exercises in the past have done similarly as well. Um, and I think, um, you know, you will create, hopefully, uh, a fire in younger people, uh, and I'm looking at the printer here as well, uh, younger people to also then take up this content and say, look, we want to introspect further, we want to do more on this. Maybe some might do something more on women, some might do something more on, you know, Sikh policemen, for instance, or, you know, people, Sikh sports people. Um, I think those questions will, will uh, you know, be fueled further and I do think that there will be many efforts along the way. So if I could just uh, maybe just take a minute to also um, sell an and, and, uh, initiative that the SAB is currently fronting. Um, we have put together a group of women, Sikh women in Singapore. Um, 20 of them have come forward to take up this challenge. Uh, the initiative is called Encore. Encore with K-A-U-R instead of C-O-R-E. And their challenge is to study and assess how do we increase the participation of Sikh women in the Sikh community. Um, this has just uh, started uh, in March. We just rounded up the, the, the group of women, the working group. Uh, they will have their meeting in the next two weeks. And soon, we will also share with you once they have done their, their findings. Should take six months to a year. Uh, and recommendations with the rest of the community as well. So, again, this is one fledgling effort that has spiraled out of that. Uh, so, I think the, the, the questions keep on burning, and, and I think there's no one definitive answer. Perhaps, you know, this is a journey that we all have to be on. So, thank you for keeping the journey alive. Um, yeah, I think I agree with Melinda. I think the youth of the Sikh community should uh, carry on this. and. Um, I think um, like from the exhibition itself, I have realized that there are very um, talented individuals that um, you know, portray their talent in terms of maybe move filmmaking or like the art pieces that they did. And I think definitely there will be certain initiatives that the youth can take up and you know, promote such uh, aspects also because I think there is a lack of um, film industry or the arts industry in the Sikh community, we don't really talk about uh, this industry as much. I mean, we know that they are accountants, lawyers, but this is like, you know, we have always heard of them. So I think this is one area that we can uh, bring up. And secondly, I think um, the intangible uh, aspect of the heritage, which was the Lokgit, I think, um, you know, many youth don't know this Logit. I, I myself don't know, but I've heard my grandmother sing, so I can pick up a few words. But I think, um, you know, going forward, we should maybe pen, it, pen this Logit down so that we don't forget them, or at least have, like, you know, some kind of uh, videos or documentaries that we can fall back on moving forward. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ask a question. It's related to youth and connections. 
um, but not specifically to this exhibition, but is, is there a, a gap between uh, younger Sikhs and their heritage? You know, uh, you know um, having sort of third generation, fourth generation Singaporeans, um, some may not have been to Punjab and have not seen, I guess, the, the places of origin of the religion. Um, there's a bit of a disconnect. So I, is there a, a problem? Is there an issue with this? And, is there, and then what efforts, I guess, can be done to promote not just a sense of own identity, but a sense of heritage upon which that identity is built? Um, I think I agree that there is a gap, but I, I don't think I'd be the best person because uh, for me, my family, uh, I've always been to India, like every year I go to India. Uh, my grandmother makes me speak Punjabi in the, at home. Mm. I speak Punjabi with my dad at home. So like I, I kind of know a lot about our heritage, but I understand from where you're coming and I've seen this in um, other of my peers. And I think mostly the reason is, okay, there are a few reasons. One is maybe sometimes the par I'm not blaming any of the parents here, but yeah, sometimes it's the parents that you know lose touch, and then so they don't put in the effort. Then so the children will just follow, and they will also not learn. Uh, secondly, is also um, you know for example Punjabi school. Um, I I attended Punjabi school, and I was one of those um, batch that you know we had those uh, at the end of the day we had Sikhi lesson, and I think that was amazing because I memorized Ardas due to that. I know how to do part because of, you know, Punjabi school. And I think, I mean, if you are able to bring that back, that would be fantastic because I think the first step to get in touch with your heritage or your identity is by knowing your values, which only come from Gurbani. So um, second is that. Third, I think the gap exists is because of interracial marriages. So when we uh, see more of the interracial marriages, there's of course that you know uh, dispute whether should I follow the Sikh way of life or should I you know follow another way of life. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think um, if only we, as a community, we are able to provide with more programs that we can get all these youth to come to get together and still be in touch with their heritage, then I think we will slowly be able to close the gap. Anything to add to that? Or sure. Ask you, Mel, yeah. I probably have a one, 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 one more point. I, I, I think Dupinder sort of summarized it really well in terms of the different aspects. Um, I think the love of the language is an important one um, because you can't, you can't really understand the culture, the, the spirituality, the values without understanding the language. And so, so that, that, that I think, you know, has been one that... Uh, uh, a lot of the members of the community have taken a, a firm lead on to make sure that 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 that, that is preserved. Um, but I think we can do more, much better and much, and we need to cater to different groups that might not be going into the mainstream schools. It's not only about um, scoring well in school. I think it's also about being able to provide opportunities for those who are not taking it up as a second language to also understand Punjabi and be able to then connect back with Gurbani because like Dupinder mentioned, if you don't have Gurbani as a core, then the values of the community is um, very much harder to understand and imbibe. One other point I thought was that, that would be important um, and the exhibition actually allows to do or has done very well is they've been able to gather artifacts that were never shown before. And so now it is actually upon the community to start researching on those artifacts um, and being able to create um, uh, maybe an impetus for the youth to try and research on them, right? Because some of these artifacts, some of the documentations, um, if they are not preserved properly, I think one, one, one initiative we should quickly do is to digitize all the documentation because obviously the humidity and the weather in Singapore is not going to preserve them for a long period of time. But that would be an impetus that I think the youth should take up. We should probably look at how we get more Sikhs and non-Sikhs to start researching on some of these artifacts and some of these stories so that we preserve that even further um, going for, uh, with regards to uh, preserving the heritage and also to keep it for longevity. So I think, uh, I mean, they both have uh, captured it very well as well, but I just add my, my own perspective on it. Um, I think there are three aspects to the heritage. The, the religious aspect, 
the cultural aspect and the language. Uh, language, we're very fortunate that SSCF has uh, you know, taken that gauntlet and, and actually done our work for us. Uh, as a parent, I say that because you know, I see how tough it is now as a parent to pass on that heritage to my children. I mean, we took it for granted when our parents were, doing that, uh, were trying to do that for us, but now I realize the challenges. Um, cultural heritage is always a challenge, right? Because um, Singapore is a, a melting, pot, melting pot of, of uh, different cultures, uh, and, and we want our children to be exposed to different cultures as well. So uh, it's always a, a balancing line, you know, how they manage uh, to um, incorporate both aspects of uh, Sikh and non-Sikh cultures. Uh, but of course, there are institutions around like SKA and others who have had, um, you know, uh, the opportunity to also keep that alive. Uh, and then the third, of course, is the religious culture. And, you know, uh, um, I mean, the Gurdwaras obviously do a good job in that. Other uh, religious organizations as well. As a parent, you know, we try to bring our kids to Gurdwara uh, at least once a week. So at least they have that, that physical touch point uh, with the Gurdwara, if, if nothing else. And then, you know, we, we try and keep the, the, the stories alive, right? Because really kids learn best through storytelling, right? Um, but can we do more? And should we do more? Definitely, most definitely. I think we definitely, there's a lot of scope for us to do a lot more. Um, how much more? I think it's both a community effort as well as individual family unit effort. As families, and I know, I mean, you know, we, we, we are working parents, you know, my wife and I work, you know, by the time we finish our work at night, you know, we have barely enough time to see the kids before they go off to dinner. So do we have the time to pass that on to the next generation? Um, sadly, we could do a lot more, uh, and I don't think we don't, have, we don't have the time to do so. So the effort has to be a lot more in that. Um, physical touch points, I think, you know, we used to have quite a lot. Uh, you know, I mentioned some of the institutions earlier. Um, we also used to do the uh, Khoi Shrip Satwan, that 17, 17 right, Satwan? projects to, to Punjab, where he brought, you know, Sikhs and non-Sikhs to Punjab. So I think that, I guess that was already a physical touch point with your heritage back uh, home, you know, in, in the, uh, back to the, the motherland, if you like. Um, but I, I think where we are lacking is the emotional connection. Uh, the kids today, and I think to some extent, similar, maybe our generation as well like that, uh, the phys emotional connection to the heritage is much weaker now, and I suspect it will be more diluted going forward. Uh, I can't see my kids really having that emotional connection that my parents or their parents had. What are some of the easiest aspects of heritage for younger members to be able to access? Um, and considering that there, this panel is consisting of people from a younger profile, Perhaps they could share some of their uh, personal insights into that. Okay, so this is the last question from the floor. So maybe I'll, I'll adapt that question and then ask the panelists and also drawing from what's been said by Mel about the challenges going ahead of youth engagement and um, the importance of that and of heritage. To ask each of the panelists, and this will be the wrap up, to each give two or three ideas of how to maintain the importance of heritage within the community, especially among the young. Uh, Mel's mentioned a series of challenges, but how do you overcome some of these things? What are some initiatives that the community can do, given the recognition of the difficulties sometimes of engaging young people with their sort of focus on digital devices and everything? And also living in modern Singapore, right? contemporary Singapore. I mean, how, how do you stay engaged with your own heritage of your own community? So if each panel, panelist could give me two or three ideas, then we will wrap up with those three or two or three ideas. So I, 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 think, I think maybe I'll start with the first idea, which I, I sort of have, have implemented a little bit, um, was I, th I, th I, th I thought there was a lot of, gap with regards to um, old history and and to be able to to, to put, put it in a medium which would attract the youngsters. And so, and, and Prof, you, you were involved in that as well, we, we then embarked on that um, on, on the documentary on Pai Maharaj Singh, for example. So that was, um, and, and with the support of uh, the Centre Sikh Gurdwara Board, you know, it was an important piece because it, 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 it helped to bridge that gap. And it only came about because I had my kids asking me questions about why were they going to the to, to the memorial. And I, I, I need I mean I understood it because of the ladies who were there. And so but you know now they are not there and they are not they are not telling the stories. So somebody had to be able to convey those stories. And so I think filmmaking is a is a one way 
one really good way to, to, to be able to, to um, project that stories and to be able to keep their stories in an interesting manner and, and contextualize it also for the young because the last thing you need to do is create something that nobody wants to watch. So you need to make it interesting and, and, and robust as well. So, so I, I think that's one idea. Um, the other idea I, I, I think, and, and this is more because um, I, I, I got this from my dad, and my dad used to love poetry, and, uh, and, and it's something that, you know, I think it's, it's important, it's a dying art. But poetry helps to convey messages that you cannot do with feeling, right? Because it, it, it becomes emotive. And I think maybe that's the part that we need to start thinking about. And very recently, I was on a trip to, to, to the UK, um, just about two weeks ago, and I went to the Midlands in, uh, and, uh, in uh, Wolverhampton, and, and the Sikh community there were actually teaching the children Punjabi rap. So it's poetry in a, in, in a different form, right? It's, a, it's, it's, it's contextualized to the time and era, but it's still poetry. And so I think maybe that those are some things that we need to start thinking about that, you know, can we bring back that art of, uh, of that emotive thinking and, 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 uh, and wordsmithing in a manner that would actually give a direct connection. So those are two ideas that... Two ideas. So first is something that is should happen within every household, and that is a very simple practice that my dad has always been doing with us. And um, when I was young, I used to take this for granted, but now I understand why my dad did that, which is that every time um, there are holidays, all the other countries are going to remain there, but your time to go back to India and learn about your heritage and your culture is only when you are young. Because once you grow old, then ideas such as, oh, I want to go, you know, Switzerland with my friends, all those will start coming in your mind. So I think when they are young and like, you know, parents still have authority over their children, bring them <laughs> to India so that they can learn more. And I think that's where emotional attachment comes. Because sometimes you just need to be with your grandparents, you just need to be attached to the place from where your ancestors come for you to understand who you are. And Second, I think, um, I mean, we have good space like SKA and stuff. So I think we need to make our intangible, the, the intangible heritage that was captured by this exhibition a bit more permanent. So that, you know, if, I mean, for example, if you can have a space whereby we showcase all the handicrafts, the, um, you know, the manjis and stuff, and it's a bit more permanent rather than, you know, just a, a it's only here for one month or so. Because I remember when I was young, I only got to see all these handicrafts during Vasaki Mela, and then they used to showcase some of the tradition. But um, if you can have a more permanent location, that would be good. And also I've seen this in like, you know, the Tooth Rally Temple, at, I don't know where it is, but the Buddhist temple. Like, I know it is a temple, but then at the second or third level, they have actually preserved all the, you know, the artifacts that you were saying. Yeah, they have preserved the artifacts. So, as a non-Buddhist, when I go to the temple, yes, I view their practices. But at the same time, I learn more about Buddhism also. And, I mean, going to the temple is very simple. Every Sunday, you can go to the temple. And, yeah, these are the little, little things that I think we as a community can do. I look at it at three, uh, three ways again. Uh, physically, I think we need to have more physical touch points for young people. Gurdwaras, grandparents, um, community organizations, whatever not. The more touch points physically our young people have with their heritage, the better they will relate to it. That's, that's the physical part. The emotional part, I think it's important to keep the art of storytelling alive, as I mentioned earlier. I think that's how younger people learn the, the best. So we must never miss opportunities for our previous generations, older generations, seniors to be able to tell stories to younger people, stories of inspiration, stories of valor, stories of bravery, stories uh, of suffering, of overcoming challenges, adversity, whatever not, right? Um, you know, and this can be done in Punjabi schools, in Gurdwaras, at any community functions. We must always have that opportunity. And for that to happen, as a community, we need to document better. We, we don't do that well enough. We have lost a lot of resources along the years, along the older decades, because we don't document well enough. And I think that we need to do better. And the third thing is mentally. And I think here, Prof, you have played a very important role because uh, the intellectual um, documentation of the Sikh community, Sikh diaspora in Singapore, the likes of yourself, Justice Chu Singh, uh, Uncle Mehrvan Singh, 
all these people who wrote. I mean, in fact, I mean, what got me interested in the Sikh community was as a young uh, you know, student in my secondary school at A-levels, I read all these works to find out more about my Sikh community, right? And, and that's what got us interested. And I know, you know, Prof, you also know that uh, many Sikh undergrads in NUS, when they do their honours thesis, quite often do it in the Sikh community, whether on women, on police, on institutions, whatever not. We must find a way to, you know, institutionalise that in a way with community support. If the community can get together and say, look, if you are a Sikh undergrad and you want to do your honours thesis or master's thesis on the Sikh community, we'll give you so much financial support, we'll give you so much support, we'll open our doors for you. And I think that will really, you know, set the ball in motion, set the ball rolling, and get more young Sikh people interested in the community intellectually as well. So three, physical, emotional, intellectual. Thank you. Well, we've, we've had uh, many good ideas and a very rich discussion. Um, it, it is impossible for me to summarize the many key points that have been raised, but I just want to sort of emphasize that I think this exhibition and the catalog and the publication have been a, a high point in featuring the heritage of the community. And as we have heard earlier, not just for the community itself, understanding its rich heritage, but for the benefit of non-Sikhs and others in Singapore who want to have a better understanding of the Sikh community. We also spoke about the importance of intergenerational engagement. It's not just one group of Sikhs of a certain age, but how do you pass on these traditions and keep the flames alive? And also of extending the coverage of um, the experience beyond Singapore, engaging the diasporic community as well. And of course, featuring all members of the community, including the women. Now, how do you keep this going? That's the challenge, right? This could be a high point, and then is it forgotten six months later and a year later, the effort's gone to waste? I don't think so because it's digitalized. Now you can access the catalog and the publications uh, forever, and as long as it's there, you know, it's easy to get, get access to. But more importantly, how do you keep that love, that recognition of heritage alive, of, of your own community, of your own identity? And here we've had several ideas from storytelling, mental, intellectual, intellectual touch points to good family practices and carrying on the tradition generation from, to generation um, and also the use of the creative devices, the arts, filmmaking as ways of carrying on the heritage. So on that note, um, can I invite you to join me to thank the panelists for their very wonderful insights. <laughs> And I now hand over the floor to Nalina. Thank you, Prof Tan, for steering the panel so expertly. And we are really grateful to the panelists because I think what really stood out for me is the principle of openness that we encountered throughout the making of the exhibition. This real, you know, unstinting way of sharing the experiences of the community that came forward. We are really grateful to the panelists for being so honest and very, very frank with your ideas. And I think that's given all of us something to mull over this evening. With that, we have come to the end of this evening's event. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters in the form of the organizations who helped us throughout the making of the exhibition and for being with us tonight to conclude the Sikhs in Singapore, a story untold exhibition and events held in conjunction. Thank you so much for being with us and a wonderful new year to all of you. Good night. I had uh, a few um, aspects of the Sikh exhibition which uh, really resonated with me. Uh, really, they were the artifacts that I saw uh, on uh, initial immigrants into Singapore, uh, whether it was the Sikh policeman's uniform or other aspects of the old Gurdwara's uh, pictures that were shown as well. This resonated with me because both my grandparents uh, were early immigrants uh, into Singapore and were very instrumental in some of the community building that happened back then. One element of the exhibition that I was best able to relate with was when I entered the settlement uh, aspect of the exhibition and I saw the portrait of Justice Chu Singh and um, it straight away struck to me because like, he was the first Sikh judge and as a youth, also in the same legal profession, I really look up to uh, him and then all the work that he has done. I feel that, you know, while 
the exhibition started by showcasing a male figure wearing a turban in the legal profession. Hopefully, going forward, more youths like me will be able to represent the legal profession in terms of women empowerment and specifically Sikh women. The most evocative uh, experience that I had from the exhibition was my grandfather's Jwala Singh's photograph there. He was appointed in the courts as an interpreter. One of the officers told him that he would have to tie his beard. He said he will do anything. He will wear a suit, he will wear a tie, but he will not tie his beard and he will not carry on with the job if he has to do that. So that, that, that was the uprightness he had in him. I felt that the most important object that I could relate to basically was understanding about my grandfather's contribution to Singapore. There was actually a specific photograph of my granddad with his two beautiful wives. And I read and I saw the photographs and all the documentations that were being given by other organizations about my granddad. I felt that I had a better understanding of him. The one that resonated with me and as well as my family actually, were the pet portraits of my great-grandfather and my grandfather. And it was an opportunity for me to actually share how my great-grandfather came to Singapore and I was able to understand how he came to Singapore and what challenges he faced. And likewise, my grandfather, how he played a very important political role and community role and many of that I didn't know. IHC managed to bring all the different Sikh institutions together on one platform to actually put this whole exhibition together. I have never seen this community coming together. It has never happened before, as far as I can remember. Everyone was so clear about what they were doing. And they did it uh, without any hesitation. As the youth of the Sikh community, I believe that heritage is an important aspect because heritage is something that is brought from the past to be enjoyed in our present and to be preserved for the future. Uh, we need to always um, uh, make sure that others uh, from outside the community recognise and know who we are and what we stand for. And this makes it all the more important being a minority within a minority. So I'm very, very thankful that IFC took this really, really important aspect of Sikh heritage and presented it in a really nicely done exhibition which could be experienced by Sikhs and non-Sikhs altogether.